Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the Indoor Farmer. I'm Waylon, this is my co-host Jeremy. And we got a big episode for you today. Very exciting for me, especially because this is episode number 30. So, you know, however many uh, people have watched any amount of my show, um, it doesn't matter because for me, it's really, you know, it's a good show for me to, to keep me moving. So this episode, we're gonna show you uh, right here the potatoes, a little bit of progress on the potatoes. And then we got a little bit of progress on my overall aquaponic system. And then we're gonna show you an exciting new uh, project, a new system that we're working on, uh, just the kind of bare bones of it right now. But it's, uh, it's really exciting for me because it's gonna be huge expansion. Uh, but before we get all the, into up all that, you know, we're gonna see how Jeremy's doing. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. It's an exciting time right now. Um, getting all the uh, gardening ready to go for the outdoors. Spring time. Yeah, yes. springtime is yeah. coming up soon, and uh, I need to get all my seeds started in the house, start getting them uh, up and running, and then, you know, as soon as it gets warm enough, get outside and get all my beds ready and start really moving forward to uh, get my outdoor garden running so I can keep up with your aquaponics here. A more expansion this year, maybe? Like, yeah, maybe. yeah, actually, definitely I, more I'm expansion. I'm interested to help you maybe build a, uh, like a, a raised bed or something because I've first seen some cool techniques and help, mm -hmm. we can help you cut down on the cost and stuff, but we can talk about that later. Um, but you were telling me about some interesting things and I forget where you learned it from, but um, it was a, a hybrid of sorts. Uh, go ahead talk about it. um yeah i have a buddy he's got a horticulture degree and i pick his brain a lot and we were just throwing stuff around talking about getting my garden up and running for this new season and uh, i was also explaining to him that the stuff i'm doing with waylon as far as learning the aquaponics how he's growing some potatoes in his basement in a five gallon bucket you know and he was telling me that we can actually graft tomatoes and potatoes together and turn two plants into one and the root of the plant being the potato is going to feed all the tomatoes and so you're going to have the roots that you're going to be eating on top of you're going to have the tomato and the fruit you're going to be eating so ultimately when the tomatoes are at the end of the cycle and the end of the season they start not producing the leaves are turning yellow it's like an early advanced warning signal that hey it's time to get those potatoes out of the ground they're ready to eat right. so it's Only kind one of one thing to pay attention to right and, you know you got right it. um but hopefully can you, can you give a quick like grafting just a maybe just it's, it's a way to combine plants together physically it's not a genetics or anything it's a way to kind of more or less stitch plants together Yes. Cool um, say it. So you'll, you'll try to find similar size stalks of your potato sprout coming out of the top of the soil. Plus with your new tomato growth being still young, you try to get those sizes pretty similar. And you need to make exact cuts, but you need to cut them in a specific shape, just like one stair and a staircase. Hmm. And that way when you sink them together, you can tape them up, put a pole to hold it. It'll eventually heal itself because you're cutting them fresh, doing it right there on the spot. And they'll Maybe just some, like, root start, gel or yeah. Something to help it. That would might. And you can just put them back together, and they'll start to grow. And it takes a while; they'll strengthen up. They'll stand on their own, and then you'll be saving space in your garden. You'll be operating two plants mm -hmm. on one spot, as opposed to having potatoes and tomatoes right. both consuming areas of your garden bed, depending on what you have. Well, and then there's the the pest control situation yes. that cuts down. And he was yeah. explaining because both of them are so similar, and that's why you can graft them together. Um, that we just uh, this we're just looking at some mint and some random thing that I don't know oh. what it is, but yeah, go right ahead. This is a this video is pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the the T5 light for a minute when we get there, but go ahead. Yeah, but. Uh, these plants both attract the same mites and they're both targeted by you know the same creatures that like to eat both of them so when you do garden them and you are gardening them separate you want to keep them at opposite ends of your garden otherwise you're making like a concentrated zone for mm. these for these mites that are going to come and just destroy your plants Doubly yeah you're giving them a bigger yeah. breeding ground so if you're not going to grow them together grow them opposite ends of the, of your garden just so I see why i wouldn't i mean i guess you can't grow every one together. You can't just like pop a no. seed in and you're getting a double plant. So it's it's a bit of a process. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's time efficient, but it would be interesting to do anyway. Yeah, I, see I, if it's that difficult. I oh, would love to maybe. try one and mm -hmm. capture what we can get off of it. He's got the potatoes and I'm gonna have tomatoes here real soon. So sure. hopefully yeah. we'll be able to share that with you guys as well. Yeah, and you guys saw that the potatoes are, are growing, but they're actually even bigger now 
Um, I'll put that some a little more progression of that out here soon. But now what you're seeing is the a uh, little earlier picture of the cucumber vines. Um, they actually have flowers all over them now. Um, I think maybe that some of that is in here. But what I found is the lettuce wasn't like this lettuce. Lettuce is not getting enough nutrients. Um, and that's because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do the cut and come again method that a friend of mine uh, actually came over that he showed me a, a lot of it and a little tricks here and there of how to do it. And actually, you know, you knew some of this stuff too, but you see how there was like dead leaves laying mm -hmm. around the bottom of the lettuce. That's actually not a good thing. Um, I thought it was good because the other stuff on top of it could have a buffer between that. But what you have to do is just keep it short and keep it trimmed and keep it, um, you know, harvested, I guess. And then you're good. You know, it's not, it's just going to stand up more and it's not going to lay down on the ground. Yeah, you can see I'm all excited about the flowers. Woo, you know, so exciting. But that doesn't mean I'm going to get any cucumbers yet. Right, not you yet. Know? <laughs> if I have enough uh, nutrients in there. And you'll have to pollinate. I, I know and I actually these flowers are really delicate and that and there's this leaf here I think that's a little nutrient deficient maybe uh, magnesium deficient I'm not sure what but and I'm getting some of that discoloration on some other leaves too but as far as the Boys, um, you come oh, down in oh. here you do it at like a little bit of an angle pull that off and then there's your two new growing yeah, we're points. just gonna cut him down because I can explain to what what he's talking about here you pinch off just before the two like little nodes. They look like little armpit hairs, um, which is something I wasn't doing um, clearly. And and well, what Waylon isn't mentioning, um, what we're doing here is we're topping the plants. Growing indoors, yes. you don't have the space that you do outdoors or in a windowsill garden. Um, so on his aquaponics here, we need to keep them. And instead of being a super tall basil mm -hmm. plant with just leaves all down it. We're topping it off and it's actually going to start splitting there and growing branches and we can keep topping like it so out. we like can make term, a basil yeah. bush it'll look more like a hedge in your garden if you train it right from a young age wait till it gets two or three nodes pinch the top node off and then all those branches will start growing out mm -hmm. and have new growth off of them and you can top those branches it'll branch out even more so yeah. you're, you're making your plant a lot bigger and it's going to give you a hardier production um, when it comes time to harvest you see how he's something I wasn't doing before was I was cutting it down real low and he's leaving some of the leaf uh, you know the stem and a little bit of the leaf there excuse me so that way there's some photosynthesis happening and I was so proud of this before at my old place at my first first grows it was all lettuce I was growing and it started to vine even my mom, my mom was like, "Well, I shouldn't do that." I was like, "Well, no. I don't know. This isn't a head of lettuce, mom. I think this is. <laughs> I'm like, this is how leaf lettuce goes." Well, what was happening is I was cutting off too much of the leaf each time, and it the plant would shoot away out and away to grow more uh, leaves and try to get more food, and it just kept doing that as I cut more off, and so I actually had it vined out above the the light. But it, uh, again, we talked about this before. I, I think it's kind of an interesting concept because it could be used somehow I, I don't know maybe not it sounds like something's fun to do maybe all the something. lettuce i've grown i've never had one vine on me like what if i got you know i don't know a, a vining basil plant and i just like had it supported everywhere and it's just i don't know could be it's, interesting it's kind of what saying. it's doing now with you having it staked in there right i mean i'm 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 creating a whole new way guys well <laughs> We've discussed this too and off camera of yeah. that's why when you're growing indoors It is a lot different because you're not going to have the elements of nature. So mm -hmm. the plants out in your yard They get wind they get rain they get hail sleet sometimes snow even I mean Just depends, but that's what strengthens your plants and that's why they're hardy and mm -hmm. you know The littlest thing like these basil plants they get a couple more big leaves on them. They're not strong enough They'll just fall over if he did run a fan through here and just had a little bit of air circulation, it will get that plant yeah. to sway, but it'll actually strengthen your stalk and it'll start to, you know, girth up on you and it'll really be a solid plant and that way you won't have the issues of worrying about if you touch it, if it's going to break. Right. See this lettuce out, it's more like a bush now and I like that. But, uh, but to your point, I need to get um, air in there even if I'm keeping these bushed. Um, and then... 
he was telling me that I shouldn't be putting these in grow cubes. I should just be sprinkling uh, seeds across there and just have a random like a herb garden. I mean, you know, it's each his own. I just like to be able to pull that cup up. And yes, a whole bunch of those uh, grow pebbles are all intertwined in the roots, but it's a quick way to get that out. And put a new one in. Yes. Um, but I, I think about it, and I'm like, I don't know that it's necessary, honestly. And so we actually, he actually did sprinkle a bunch of his seeds in, in different spots around here. And uh, what I need is more fish. Um, I feel like I'm too... I'm like a helicopter parent. I'm, I'm worried about them ever, and so I don't want to give them any stress, even though they need some stress. Yeah. But the same thing with the fish. I, I can add more fish. I feel like oh, I shouldn't add too many fish. I don't want to be overdoing it. But there's a lot of uh, a lot a lot more volume of water in this system than what's in the aquarium because right. all the water running through it and filling the beds. So if you go to PetSmart and you talk to them about their fish, I, you ask them, well, how come you can have so many crammed in those in that thing? It's because the fish actually, the, the total volume of water in the whole system is what counts for that fish. So they'll have like a big tank in the back that's giving them clean water. And so as long as you have a filtration system, actually you can put more fish in a smaller area. So I should pack them, but here's the thing. I've already had a few babies, um, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. Oh, little tiny baby, I can see it. It's a, dude, they're so tiny too. Guppy babies? I mean, like, wow. So, but I'm excited about it when it happens, but I want them to, to start filling that tank up. And right now they haven't made any babies since they've been in this house. I want to say springtime might change that because the general temperature in the basement is still chilly. You've been out of 69 degrees right now, but 69 degrees in the springtime is a different feel or when the, in, the, in the summertime. So hopefully that, that warmer temperature will get them to start breeding. Well, and that brings me back to on the other episodes when I asked you about the water temperature when you had the tank like sitting on the floor, and so it was sitting well, on I a concrete okay, floor. But, but I, d I didn't know if, if you could induce that based on water temperature, kind of like how we're manipulating um, growth cycles of plants in your house by manipulating seasons, you know, and seasonal I changes. Give in them that, a if if we could warm that water up, if it would, you know spark the mating right. season for them things that things that spark them to mate um are things that make them more comfortable right and eat like extra like if i feed them not necessarily overfeed them but if i'm making sure they're well fed that's one thing another thing is that they have lots of places to hide inside the tank which is interesting because when you go with larger aquaponic systems that's not a thing you don't have large aquariums with cool cool plants in them mm -hmm. and you know rocks and cool like a, a, a arrangements right um but they have these giant tanks so I, I don't know how i don't know what 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 changes there mm -hmm. the larger fish maybe it's not a big thing but with these fish if i there, there's nowhere to hide and they have babies they probably do this often and everything all the other fish will eat them up oh I'm sure and the mother will even eat them so that's why there's all this hiding spot. So I, it's, I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens when I go to that next level yeah. with the uh, with the uh, big tank. And then it's like when we go fishing, we're planning a fishing trip, and maybe uh, I'd like to go hunting sometime. That'd be cool. I don't know if you do that, but uh, that my brother hunts, and he's he told me I could go with him too. Um, I'll be quiet with my camera, you know. Let me get the shot off, and then. Uh, can you catch it? Actually, what would be really cool when we go fishing would be to get like a drone that holds your phone. You oh, know, geez. there's some of those that will like. Don't to... run fishing for me. Come on, though. I mean, the, the, just for a few minutes would be cool. But those there's there's some that have some way of like knowing where you are, and so they just sort of like hover uh, around you. You don't have to sit there and right control it. I don't know. There's. So is this where we're talking about the T5 light and moving it? Yeah, he, he had a good point. I mean, initially I had a bungee cord here hooking the, the T5 to <clears throat> angle it towards this sort of angled grill system that I have. But that, in hindsight, is not a great idea because you're going to have all these plants sort of growing towards that light instead of right. straight up. And so I'm going to move that. I, I already did it. I moved the, the T5 light towards the center. And he's telling me that this pepper light, or this pepper back here, it's a rainbow pepper, isn't getting enough light. But I don't, I don't know if I agree. Um, yes, that's a weaker light, but it's pretty close. It's getting a, a strong dose of light all day. Um, 
I don't know. We'll see. But with the T5 light moved and raised up, you still have you have that you know right. arc of where the light's going, and that's where it is moved already. And then yeah, see the moving around. That's when I was still holding it. Uh, that's why I want to get a gimbal before I have anyone recording me because the gimbal uh, will help. It, it just keeps it perfectly still even though you're moving it around. Yeah. You, it, it, there's like a gyroscope inside of it so your phone is like spinning around really. But anyway, um, down the road. We'll see. Baby steps. What I want to do is I want to get another camera and maybe a better microphone that goes both directions and then we can have some guests in here. You and I on this side, guests on that side and you know chill and talk i want to ask random questions that they don't ever get you know talk to these experts so-called experts and be like you know uh when you were the first time you did this what you know ask them memories from their early days well i've been doing this since i was six well I, you you kind of beat me there then i can't i can't i can't catch up to that but um that's that's good you know I know some farmers that their whole like several generations of farmers and um, that's awesome but it's really hard to uh, envision what that person would do if they had to stop farming right. just like a person in the city going to farm yeah it's like very weird anyway this is a uh, you know see how fast I'm moving similar to your video later a little oh, bit yeah. of video with him in it this time guys i'm excited about that he didn't know about it and i wasn't really thinking that he didn't know about it so i didn't do it on purpose did not he set me up guys he set me up look you get to see his underwear a couple times we'll try to skip through that part it's nothing spectacular i think it it's kind of blurry because he's moving so fast and i feel like maybe there's a snowman or something but I don't think that's the case so we're not gonna we won't go there oh look at that you tied a bunch of crap together cool <laughs> I mean I, I think there's something I, no it looks good man you got there's a connector I can switch that up with but we'll get you working with that tape measure in that level we'll get we'll get you squared what are away you what do you mean for the lights oh well eh, air angle so they'll be bit. the same height you can get them level <laughs> so they're not yeah, see I this see. Guy back here. Okay, look. I wasn't this is where at... Waylon and I differ. I think I fixed it later. I think you did. Oh, this is an older photo. This is just oh. before I fixed the T5s. This is the lettuce. I wasn't sure what was wrong with it, but you can see it's real thin. It's not. Those aren't spots. Those are just thin. Mm -hmm. It's where it's uh, rotted because it's not. Doesn't get enough nutrients. But here's a. a... Oh. Oh, look what you did. That's okay. That's okay. I don't really need to explain it. I um, we have a new project here with this lumber. Clearly, and that's it's funny because it happened that we we put it off for a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, another friend of mine who's been on the show, and we we happened to finally get to the point where we build it on the same day that I find that I made a leak happen in the other grow bed and the in the where the basil is basically the basil. I had these little corn skewers that I was trying to hold the basil up because I didn't know what else to do with it. I'm like, well, let's keep it growing. Ah, you know? <laughs> and we talked about the, the house plants. Yeah. But, but anyway, I, I, I poked the, I think I poked a hole in the plastic because I stuck the skewer in the wrong direction, the pointy end. And yeah, I didn't touch very hard, but I just enough that I'm sure right, that, that's tight. what happened. Yes. Um, so anyway, so now it's slowly leaking through that, that wood, um, the grill bed and so that's old you know it's a solid wood bed but it's just going to rot everything out and just right uh anyway so it just happened at the same time as us working on this new system and yeah there's my dog mia uh she's a pain in the butt but here's me doing some work um probably wrong probably something wrong with this other than the length <laughs> <laughs> of the two boards so the two you might not be able to tell look i can't tell by looking at it uh the the two side boards are different lengths like by four or five inches if i remember right it was enough that it, like you should be able to see it like one of these one of these shorter boards should be bent like visibly so we didn't really make you know a good table we made more of a rhombus 
It's not even four feet wide, so you can't even say it's a four by eight. It's like a three and a three and a half by. Anyway, yeah, I think you can, it'll work out. You can see me over there just shuffling around. I just got here. I was trying to figure out what's going on. I'm meeting Ed for the first time. So, you thought we you know, were filming that day. I did. Yeah, I <laughs> thought I was coming over to film, and uh, instead, uh, I get filmed. But yeah. No, I, was I, didn't, just, I didn't even ask, but he started pitching in, and I think he's got some skills. You'll see. He, he, he needed a little up. help. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, we got some carpentry background. Look, so. right here, Wayland's shooting his first screw ever, so it was fun. That's why I'm over there coaching. They call it a screw driver, I guess. Um, this one is uh. was electronic. <laughs> this one had a battery pack, they call it. Um uh, I forget the name of this uh, kit that I bought, but there was like eight different power tools in there, it, and they were decent, um, decent brand. I'll I'll, I'll f find that brand and probably shout it out sometime. So far, they've they've been pretty good, but I, I haven't done a ton of stuff. Just this these two systems. So, what what are you actually building with this table? What are we doing here? Well, when the table's upright, you'll be able to see, a, you'll be able to tell a little bit better. But it's going to be a, a I think I'm going to do a, a flood and drain bed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have room that there's going to be, there can be options here. I can divide this up and I can do, I could do something different on, on somewhere else. Say if I use like chicken wire or something, I can make a divider that kept the hydroton or those little clay pebbles that you see on my, my other grow bed, keep that out. And have one section that is still, um, you know, flood and drain, or even just stays full, for like a, a float bed. Yep. They call it. They call it a raft bed or a float bed, um, and, and do that on the side. Where, but here's the thing: you see this. This is six inches wide, so it's not going to be any more than six inches deep. But I, I think that I can get around that by say a bucket or a pot or or anything. Even those cloth pots. Yeah. I could lay that cloth pot in in there before we put the hydroton around it maybe fill the pot up first and then around it and then that pot will be integrated into the system but give have a higher volume for ro roots to get oh, give, get more room because some saying. some plants need more room yeah because six inches isn't all you know look six inches isn't always going to cut it you know i mean they say they say it doesn't matter but sometimes it can matter i mean there's some things that need a good 12 inches that's why you know Hey, God made all the plants a little bit different, just like people say. And here's what we're just standing around talking about it. Well, we could do this, you know. Uh, right here, that leg wasn't pulled up all the way tight enough. It was a gap there, and that's why You're I right. was telling Waylon about, and uh, Ed was like, yeah, we need to sync that up. So. That's where we need a camera guy, though. So we need yeah. somebody in or the action. Someone to tell you you're on camera so you're not like, hey, I'm just going to cover everything we're doing with my butt the whole time. I, I know it's payback from the earlier videos. I made fun of Waylon for it, so now it's my turn. It was pretty clear. I didn't have it hidden in a, in a teddy bear or anything on the wall. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess I should I should have said something. You're right. And as you'll see, like you see the wood that we use. None of it looks new. This oh, yeah. is all reclaimed. This mm -hmm. is all reclaimed stuff. It's all repurposed. So everything that we're using on this project is stuff that's free. It was just laying around. People had. I'll, I'll, I'll be putting some money into it. Uh, but Eventually, not, but, but not, not a ton. for the majority of this project, it's going to be real low budget. It's uh, just our craftsmanship and ingenuity with the stuff that we have, we're just to show you. Stuff. You don't have to go buy these expensive, expensive systems. I mean, yeah, everything's all one kit and caboodle, but if, you know, you, you learn as you small. go and you make yeah. it fun. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how we grow. You can get started small like if you think um you know i can't build a four by eight grow bed in the yard you know or like a raised bed well build a, a, a two by two mm -hmm. raised bed start with one thing and try to see what happens um and, and this is actually a good point to talk about that because i thought why would you why would you grow house plants and um my friend uh my friend Bo grows house plants you grow house plants and I thought, well, wouldn't you want to grow them that are, you know, um, useful in some way, like medicinal or something? Well, they are useful. They're useful in a lot of ways that I mm -hmm. thought of afterwards. You know, they're 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 a stress reliever. They they have um, different use. Well, actually, I don't remember all the uses we went over. Do you remember other other reasons to have a house plant? 
you got house plants. That's can't therapeutic. Remember. Therapeutic reason for mm-hmm. sure. But, oh, that that was one reason I brought this up is that the knowledge that you get from growing a house plant, <clears throat> in my opinion, is that you get to learn learn by looking at that plant more by whether it looks happy or not whether it needs things what 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 it needs right. because when i look at my aquaponic system and i and i ma- i made this analogy before is the it's kind of like a, your how your boss looks at you as something that needs to produce you know so i look at those plants and i think oh well how's the production what's the production happening there um, <clears throat> this is just a shelf we're going to put on the on the outside with the extra material it's going to work out great but um, i think well What's well, what's it going to make? Oh, is it is this is this something edible yet? But when you have a house plant, there he is. Finally, he's on screen. Um, you have a house plant. You're not looking at it to produce anything. You're looking at it to be happy. So it's a different mindset. You're mm-hmm. thinking, what can I do for you today? You know, what can I talk to you? Can I spend time with you? Um, as a, as opposed to, well, is it time to harvest you yet? You know, can I eat it, you? What can I eat? I mean, you made some good points the other day, though. That it's they are lots, they are similar in a lot of ways, but but to me, I think it, it would be a good way to learn the other half of it to to um, put towards the edible plants. You know, put mm-hmm. that knowledge towards the plants because you want to also make sure they're happy, make sure they're, you know. So so I was letting this stuff just grow like crazy, thinking it looked great, taking pictures of it, you know. But I needed to be harvesting it, and that means I need to start finding ways to use it. And I think a good way to do that is to put up, to make up like boxes of um, various things I'm growing, and give them away to friends and family that um, are, you know, somewhat close to this project. Like I could name three or four people that I could probably be giving these sort of uh, we call it like assorted boxes of, mm-hmm. you know weekly and even if they don't eat it it's it, it would get me in the habit of the i don't know business type mindset that no one's paying for it but just sort of a customer service the logistics of uh, of, of making these packages and i don't know it could be good practice for later you know yeah i guess but yeah you can take it away man you're you're a fast worker i just i love saying that because just... yeah this is where waylon went outside and finally left me alone and Gave me a chance to, you know, do the light my job. was on, and he didn't know it was being yeah. recorded. This is when I discovered that one side fault, is like ninety nine and one sixteenth of an inch long, and the other side is like ninety five and three quarter. It was, and I'm like, huh? So Does I had it to look make like it though. I had to make two different, you know, two different equations. Figure out the center points where I'm going to adjust. I'm just measuring where I'm going to put these footers to get them, you know, equal on sides, but. You know, also, we need to get them in the right spot to help alleviate the pressure off this metal, sheet metal that we're going to put in there as a bottom liner that Waylon has. Just this random piece of sheet yeah. metal. So while he's doing this, I'm outside digging this sheet metal out of the ground. It's like six inches frozen into the ground. And it's also next to a piece of plywood that it must have been attached to at some point, which is then um, all rotted and frozen in the ground as well. And I, and I had to use several tools, ended up using a, a hatchet and actually using the blade end. So it's going to be all dull as, 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 as uh, you know, all get out, we'll say. And uh, using the hatchet, digging away at the dirt. <laughs> yeah. No, as you see, I have brief moments where I completely disappear for a good minute there. Uh, that's because Waylon's needing me to hand stuff out the window for him, you know. Scalpel. You get, I need a hammer. Can you get me this? Does my hair still look good? You know. How's my butt look in these pants, right. you know, stuff like that. Speaking of butt, I'll, I'll have to, it's, I'll, it'll I'll, come I'll, up. Skip, it's, I'll skip, I have it, yeah, there we go. A little, a little, little teeny, little teeny bit there. We'll, we'll just, we'll skip on the, on the points where uh, it gets too risque. Yeah, I mean, I'm just transferring my lines down. I think there's it. a little bush at one point, but we won't, we won't go there. Hey man, the winter coat came in, I can't help it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's better than plumber's crack, like I did one time on earlier episode that you don't need to go find. See, that was a pivotal I, point there. I kept there. it in there. I realized yeah. that, you know, when I flipped this upside down, everything's going to be backwards, so everything had to be crossed over, so I put them accordingly on the floor mm-hmm. so I wouldn't get mis- mixed up when I flipped the table over. 
And I like this was your idea to to use these boards that we had left as uh, just cross member supports. Support, which yeah. Ed had said later, you know, oh, man, I didn't think of, I didn't even know why I don't know why I didn't think about that. I should say. Um, but then, but then we decided to use two by fours as legs over here, and I'm definitely going to build supports to strengthen that later. Yeah, we discussed that. If I'd have been here earlier, I would have said at least put them, you know, opposite corners of each other, so they weren't right that on one been that side. Much or... Better though. Well, it is going to divvy up a little up bit because they're not going to be on the same end. Just you know, those two. You're solely. right. I'd be begr I'm begrudging about the uh, the critique. I should say. Nah, it's. But this guy, he's meticulous. He's doing pilot holes, and he's doing it right. Because older wood, you're going to have, um, <clears throat> let's see, one moment. Yeah, so I like how meticulous this is because in the future, like my plan earlier, well, at first I thought it was overkill, honestly. But at the same time, if we're adding things to this and later – weight that we're added to it or, or the, the the idea i had with the barrels inside right. there for the you know more volume for certain plants i don't think i would do potatoes in hydroton um no. I, I don't know if that would work honestly but um maybe because it's not just seeds you're throwing in there you're throwing a chunk of potato but it could get rotted too it would have to be like a flood and drain table probably if i tried that but but anyway my plan is to have the nutrients coming in in one side of the table and then out on the far end of that table so that way i can monitor the the nutrients and right. see uh, you know if we've got enough if we if we have more than enough um didn't we discuss uh i know we haven't discussed it on here yet but we were talking about putting the plants that need less nutrients first in that grow yes. bed that way when the nutrient packed water is coming into that cycle this mm -hmm. is only chipping away taking a little bit of stuff that it needs and so those mm -hmm. nutrients actually will extend all the way to the end of that grow bed as you're flushing water from one end to the next plants are just going to pull out what they want yeah i th actually thought backwards uh, at first i thought well we want to put the guys that need all the nutrients right there at the beginning no that's not because now you're just no. sending yeah water with nothing right it's just going to be yeah so so if you put the guys that don't need much most of it will flow by and they'll, they'll act as a good filter and a good uh, spot for those microbial bacteria that we want to grow and that also that helps do the breakdown process of all the fish you know chum into the nitrites and nitrates oh here's a spot we're gonna you're you're okay here i think yeah, Can't luckily, really see much. luckily with the modern underwear now, plumbing yeah, the, cracks not as big as a deal. Yeah, that's actually good. I I don't know how I was showing crack that one day, you know. Anyway, flat backed. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, maybe I was wearing my old pair. You know, my old pair of Grant. Maybe it was uh, uh, laundry day. I was wearing my granny panties. Is that a thing for guys? I don't know. We still have our old, you know, the old ones that are, you know, might rip if you turn too hard in a different direction, but it's okay. I just buy um, new. I'll skip ahead a little bit just to. Yeah, now I'm still hunting for something at Wayland. I'm yelling. I only have like two screws left to shoot. Leave me alone. Your first time working here, doing any, doing the construction stuff, you found things that you needed to, you know, not, not too bad. You did find me the teeny hammer, but it worked for what I needed. Guys, if someone says, go get me a hammer, and says it's in the toolbox, you walk around the corner, you see a toolbox, you open it, there's a hammer, and it's it the only the one toolbox. you saw, you're going to take it. It's a, it was, it's like a, it's like the letter opener of hammers. I don't know. What would, what kind of hammer, what would you call that? Next time, attack hammer? Next time, say 16 ounce, 20 ounce. But I like how, I like the little hammer too, foot. though. The little hammer needs used. It needs a little workout. As you see, I'm just checking, making sure everything's solid. Like I said, these are all repurposed. That board had a little bit of a bow to it. I probably should have flipped it over, but instead, you know, I do what most of us do. Ah, we'll just shoot another screw or oh. two. It'll be solid. But yeah, I like how you, uh, I keep coming back to the pilot holes because of the age of the wood and the, how it was sitting outside for a year. And I mean, I did have a piece of plywood over it, mm -hmm. but... It really does help lot. when it's old and dry like that. Uh, drill your pilot holes first. You're going to really, you know, eliminate a lot of the risk. Some, of, I would have done some damage, I think, if I just kept doing what I was doing. Yeah, you'll blow those boards out. They'll just split. They're too dry. Um, you treat them right, though. they still got a lot of life left in them. As you see, I'm still just double-checking. Like, I don't know how much weight he's trying to support. I've never built one of these beds, so I'm just trying to make sure 
that, you know, we're definitely covering ourselves here to have enough support so this thing doesn't fall. Waylon's uh, looking into a 300 gallon tank to go under this table. So we'll, we'll get a st stock tank. They call and that's it, yeah. yeah, stock tank. And that's why we're going to go and go fish and we're going to go catch a bunch of bluegill. And we're going to try to help populate this yes. with local bluegill. Or bass. I mean, if we're not that I don't know. I'm I not would, that good at fishing, but we'll, we'll, I, something. That's I mean, I can catch something. a lot of little bass. That's fine. Yeah. I know where the little bass hide cool. in the what lake that we're going to go yeah. to. But they will get big and, you know bass you're not going to have the number of bluegill bluegill still you know mm -hmm. like we said with aquaponics it's supposed to be like all renewable and we're going to eat the fish and the plants when the fish are growing too mm -hmm. much and too much population in one tank you know you thin them out a little bit and even if it's a, a fish that say gets too old and dies um when you have a fish like a few pounds large that's if it's not going to be edible that's awesome for the garden you bury that under a, a, a bed in, in the garden I mean that you're gonna see awesome. I mean you got to bury it deep enough, you know, so you're not gonna have too many mm -hmm. issues. But and as you can I'm see, that helps a lot. The type of guy that I am, I had no clue. I'm being taped, and Waylon walks in. I'm like, sorry, man, I'm cleaning your basement. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to keep a clean a workspace, man. Keep and he it didn't clean. know he was being recorded, so nah. that means this was that was all. That's a genuine act right there, genuine. man. It was heartfelt. I feel. Don't um, don't let the old lady catch wind of this, man. I'll be expected right, to do it at home right. now. So yeah, that's the new project. It's a little, you know, it's early in the works, of course. Um, we appreciate any feedback, of course, but this is this is this goes back to the whole me using reusing uh, materials and recycling. I guess you could just say that. But uh, I, I don't want to just go and buy. You know, I could save up and buy some pre free prefab set setup or some you know professional mm -hmm. system. I want to learn how to, you know, I, I'm learning several things. I'm learning plumbing. I'm learning, you know, how to uh, um, construction. I'm learning all these things that that are good good skills to have anyway. Maybe someday I'll have like what I want to do is like a professional side uh, equipment, and another side that's the, you know, the Sanford and Son, the hodgepodge. You know, we we'll just use whatever we can find. Need pickers. Yes, pickers. You know, I mean, I'm gonna go to the junkyard. I'll, I'll find some some crazy stuff there maybe one day. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, where can they find you? I'm just kidding. Where well, this is all this is the only place you can find us right now. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I'm home or Wayland's. Uh, it's pretty much what you I do. You can find me at home. You'll catch me at the school picking up kids, dropping there you them off. Go, Other kids. than that, it's yeah. not a whole lot. Yeah. Springtime's um, coming, guys. No, but definitely, if anybody has any questions, comments, or stuff you might want to see or learn more about, put it in the comments we'll address it as soon as we can uh nothing else it's research that we're going to have to do and it only strengthens us you know we'll learn something in the process too yeah if you see something we're doing wrong or have any ideas for us give us a holler thanks thank you